Mm -hmm. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Erie Times News online reporter Sarah Grabsky. I have Erie Times News health reporter David Bruce with us today. We are um, going to be talking to you guys about cancer in Erie County. Uh, we have a special cancer awareness edition that was included in your Erie Times News today. It is pink. Um, we have done this since 2014, David. Yes. Uh, we are going to be just discussing some of our coverage, uh, what we've discovered in our reporting, but most importantly, uh, in these Facebook Live discussions, we want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. We want your comments. We want your questions. What do you want to know? Um, and because David and I are going to be talking on camera, off camera is our moderator, uh, Christopher Millette. He will be uh, you know, forwarding your comments to us. So please feel free. We want you to be truly part of this conversation as we are talking about cancer in Erie County. Um, it's such a prevalent thing. Everyone knows something that someone that's been affected mm -hmm. by this issue um, in the, the, last, uh, the last six years. Yes, this that is we've been the, doing it. It's, it's this is the sixth edition. So the first one came out in October of 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, the first couple of them, um, if folks remember, uh, dealt uh, primarily with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, the last couple have uh, kind of ventured out into all different types of cancer. We had a lot of feedback from folks about why aren't you doing stories about skin cancer, mm -hmm. prostate cancer, mm -hmm. all the other different kinds of cancers. So now it's more about cancer in general. Yes. Um, this year we had a very specific. Um, area to, to focus on because of what's been happening with cancer care in area. Mm -hmm. um, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, speaking of past stories, David has reported, you've done stories in all of these sections, mm -hmm. some of which the subjects are tragically no longer here. Right. I mean, and that's one of the things is that we have dealt with, uh, gotten to know many people who are battling cancer. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, even with all the in impressive treatments that are mm -hmm. out there, all the new technology, it is still a, a deadly disease. I mean, it, it, unbelievable the number of people who die from cancer each year, both here in Erie County and across the nation. One of the things we wanted to focus on is cancer care is dramatically changing this year in Erie. True. When um, Matt Martin, our executive editor at the paper, and I were talking about, you know, what are some of the ideas for, for the cancer edition this year, obviously we were going to go in a different, a different way. As most of you know, um, after 32 years, the Regional Cancer Center, Erie's Outpatient Cancer Treatment Center, is um, closing the actual the business itself. And St. Vincent Hospital and UPMC Hammett are going to open their own cancer centers as of early November. The um, last day for the Regional Cancer Center is November 1st. That's the last day they will be treating cancer patients there. So obviously we thought with the cancer edition, the primary story, the main story is what is going to happen? Mm -hmm. What will be the change come early November when UPMC opens its cancer center, which will be in the RCC building? There will still be cancer care provided at that building on West 12th Street near the Yorktown Center, um, only instead of being the regional cancer center and being jointly owned by St. Vincent and Hammett, it will be a UPMC Hillman Cancer Center operated by UPMC. Meanwhile, St. Vincent is, and anyone that's driven by the hospital in recent months, has seen this, this huge building being built, kitty corner from the hospital mm -hmm. itself at 25th yeah. and Myrtle, and that will be the AHN Cancer Institute at St. Vincent. I think I got the name right on that. And um, that's going to be Vincent's cancer, cancer Center. So we are going to have two new cancer centers as of the first week of November. Now, you, he has covered this, you know, you've covered cancer extensively. How will that transform or shape you know our what what your diagnosis looks like where you go from that you know what 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 is it going to look like well it's going to be very interesting first of all you know and i've asked both hospital systems many questions on this this was you know going back into the late 1980s when um when some oncologists along with the folks from hammett and vincent decided to jointly create one cancer center um, t so that care wouldn't be duplicated. Mm -hmm. This is a reversal of that. Yeah. Um, talking with folks at both hospitals, they said situations have changed. There is a huge increase in the number of cancer patients. Um, the biggest change after talking with the folks at UPMC and Allegheny Health Network, which is the parent organization for St. Vincent, um, they said there are ways that they can incorporate these cancer centers into their systems that will benefit cancer patients. Specifically, 
there's been problems with RCC getting access to many different clinical trials in, in recent years. And both the folks at UPMC and the folks at AHN say patients at these new cancer centers will have access to many more clinical trials. Clinical trials are where cutting edge medicine, especially for cancer care, are done. And they have greater access through their systems, um, through the UPMC system, for mm -hmm. the UPMC center, for the Hammett Center, and then through AHN's Cancer Institute and their partnership with Johns Hopkins for folks who enter cancer treatment through St. Vincent. Mm. Um, also, they're going to be bringing in new uh, technology for radiation down the road. Also, they're going to restore um, chemotherapy services to these centers. For the last two years, chemotherapy services have been done at the hospitals themselves they are going to be put back into the respective cancer centers. Mm -hmm. So cancer, the day-to-day -day aspects of cancer care are going to change significantly starting in November. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of covers a lot of that story and a lot of what was in our cancer section because that's been a majority of what people are wondering. Um, what are or who are some of the people that you talk to for this edition specifically? Well, I, I, I talked, of course, with the, the folks who run each hospital, mm -hmm. which is David Gibbons at UPMC Hammett, and then Dr. Clark over at St. Vincent, um, and also talked with some of the, the physician leaders at for both of the cancer systems for both AHN and UPMC. Um, they, are very in, they are very optimistic about how cancer care is going to improve um, right. with the opening of these centers. Of course, realizing that while the RCC did have managerial issues over the years, in fact, it led to court. There was a court case between Vincent and Hammett, basically, um, about the, the running of the RCC. Um, patients themselves have loved the Regional Cancer Center over the years, how they were treated, the care that they got. It's going to be interesting to see what patients think of the new cancer centers when they open. Um, and it's very interesting, the difference between the two is that Hammett is running theirs in the RCC building. Mm -hmm. They're also going to move their pulmonology practice in there because pulmonologists often deal with a lot of lung cancer patients. Um, but it's going to be very similar, at least to folks at a passing view, that the RCC building, it's going to look like it's still the RCC building. But it will not be the RCC. It will be the AHN, um, I'm sorry, not the AHN, the UPMC Hillman Cancer Center. No, did you uh, get in there? Did you look to um, see? Not yet. There hasn't been. It's still the RCC. Right okay, now. right, because November 1st. It's, right, it's still the yeah. RCC. The last day for the RCC is November 1st, which is a Friday, and then that next week it becomes the UPMC Hillman Cancer Center. Um, and I have not been into the new St. Vincent one yet, which is still being built. Looking forward to going in there and seeing that. Um, Didn't mean to interrupt your thought. Oh, Continue. that's okay. <laughs> the, the other story um, that was interesting with this is um, when I was talking with Matt Martin is he wanted an update with, at the time, we didn't know the latest developments with John Kansas's cancer yes. treatment machine. Yes. Um, Matt had asked if we could do a story based on the fact that we haven't heard much about what's going on with, with John Kansas's device. What is the future of cancer care? As I was just getting ready to start making calls and doing that story, we got word that the latest version of, of John Kansas's device, which is owned by Neotherma, which we did a Facebook Live broadcast about or streaming about two weeks, two weeks ago. ago um, they have a new version of his device and that human trials are coming up. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we did in the in the edition is, is kind of consolidated the two stories that I wrote um, when that news broke and kind of gave folks an explainer on what they can expect with that, which is possibly human trials within three to six months, possibly, and it looks like they're going to be done at UPMC facilities, hopefully including the new UPMC Hillman Cancer Center here in Erie. Mm -hmm. More stories. Um, you, did you, I don't know if this was you. Did you do any patient stories? We oh. had a story on um, Caitlin Caffini, who mm -hmm. is a uh, workout phenom here in Erie County and was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, her story is inspirational, motivational. That's a must read. Other patient stories. I, would, I was able to come across um, Lisa DeFrancisco, um, who is a, a wonderful lady who is undergoing. Um, pretty pretty intense cancer treatment and during her chemotherapy treatments she is crocheting she was crocheting blankets for fellow cancer patients and then for some of the oncology nurses who were treating her wonderful lady I got a chance to meet so that's a, a story if you get a chance to read that in our cancer edition that's well worthwhile um, really good number of, of cancer patient stories done by a variety of folks uh, yeah. Jim Martin did a, did one um, Heather Cass I think did the one yes, on the, on the patient the you were mentioning 
Um, we also have a story about the um, the Meadville um, Meadville oh, Hospitals right. Cancer Center, the Barco Institute down there, and also some other interesting stories. Um, Sarah compiles some stats on cancer. Yeah, it's well worth your time. There's a, there's a good number of stories. We get into depth about. Um, cancer care in Erie, cancer treatment, mm -hmm. and most of all, the folks that it affects and, and their personal stories about cancer. And I think that this year, really, this works because the entire, there's news on the front page. You still get your regular Erie Times news, and yet we have this special edition for those who are interested in cancer in Erie County. And like I said, it's, it's becoming, unfortunately, more and more common. It seems like that people are families are being affected by this um, actually just today we mm -hmm. had some tragic news we came in today and um, this isn't part of the the pink edition of the paper but I'm sure a lot of folks who saw the paper today saw the obituary for for Ashley Kuzma who is a um, was a teacher at Mill Creek Intermediate um, we did a story I did a couple stories on Ashley earlier this year she um, battled uh, throat cancer a really tough one that had a high recurrence rate and she had undergone surgeries, radiation, chemotherapy. She kept coming back to teach. She was nominated for um, a, to win a cruise as part of a, a, a contest that a cruise line was doing for teachers. She ended up winning the cruise. I mean, it was a great story. A wonderful lady, wonderful young teacher, just 30, 32 years old. Um, we saw today her obituary in the paper, a compelling obituary. If you get a chance to read it, she wrote it herself, obviously, um, in the weeks before she died. It's a first-person obituary, which is pretty unique in our yeah. paper and in newspapers in general. Um, Well-written. Um, I took some of that and uh, put, a, uh, put a story together that is online on GoEerie.com right now and will be in the paper tomorrow. Um, a wonderful young woman, um, tragically taken from us, way too young. I know she made an impact on a, a lot of people's lives, students' lives, fellow teachers' lives. Yeah. Really a vibrant young lady who, who really made the best of what was a pretty tough cancer diagnosis. Our condolences to her family. I couldn't make it through the obituary without tearing up. I, it, it's insane. It's, it's incredibly well written and, and very sweet. So. Um, David, anything else you want to add about the cancer section? Well, certainly it's it's well worth your time to get it. It mm -hmm. is part of the paper. If you, if you don't have it home delivered, you can go out and, and buy it. Um, we did have um, it available with donuts earlier yes. this morning for folks. You missed the donuts. <laughs> Sorry, but you can still They're get tasty. the paper. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it is, and, and I believe part of the proceeds today will benefit two local um, organizations who support patients with families who've been affected by cancer, Cody's Wheels of Hope and Linked by Pink. So 50 cents of every paper that you buy today will go toward that. So um, yeah, get the paper. Anyway, um, anything else? No, I think this is something we've done this now uh, for six editions over the years. Yeah. It's a well-received edition. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in some ways, there is uh, many, many stories to tell. So many folks battling cancer. Mm -hmm. It's become almost part of our community. You see it on GoFundMe pages, people mm -hmm. raising money to help cover some of the, the medical costs, um, fundraisers all going on. It is um, a compelling issue. Highly recommend that you read it. And um, thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I should add too, if you want to look at online coverage, www.goeerie.com slash topics slash cancer hyphen awareness. We have plenty of online only stuff, some stuff that didn't make it into the paper, like a graphic that I did. Um, <laughs> self pitch there. Uh, but anyway, lots so, of good cancer yeah, stats. There. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.